So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull cards for each day, Monday through Thursday this week, because you need to know how the day is gonna go, right? You wanna sneak peek of what's gonna happen, and that way you can use this energy to your, your own benefit, right? You can understand why things are happening. Just like I said, last weekend, we pulled the Knight of Swords and the Eight of Swords in reverse, and we also pulled the Three of Pentacles in reverse. And for me, it played out just as it said it was going to. The internet stopped working. Uh, they were having to work on the issue all weekend, and I didn't get any relief until five minutes ago. <laughs> so that's how it works, okay? But first, we are going to balance the heart chakra. We need to have a nice, balanced, and working heart chakra because we carry a lot in there, okay? It is the connection between our human 3D-ness and our divine body, okay? So the heart chakra is really important. This is why I use this bowl every Monday to get us like fired back up, okay? All you gotta do is just breathe as the bowl is singing. Just take nice deep breaths. If you can sit up straight, that would be great. If you can't, that's okay. But it's just as the more straight you are, the better because Think of your spine as an antenna, <clears throat> and we want that direct line of communication, okay? So here we go. Just breathe. Nice deep breath. Now everybody take one big collective breath in. Fill up your lungs, pick up all that heaviness from the weekend, and then blow it out quickly. Just let it go, okay? Everything that has happened in the past is in the past. We've let it go, now we're ready to move forward. All right, what we're going to do first is get our fairy blessing. Yeah, I'm finally here. Yeah, I finally got internet like a few minutes ago. So sorry for the delay, you guys. <laughs> it was frustrating, but you know what? It worked out. So, okay. Let's see what our fairy blessing is for the weekend. I'm sorry, for the week. And then y'all are going to pick the deck that I use, and we'll see what is coming up for us this week, all right? What is our fairy blessing for this week? Ooh, a blessing of stability. Look at that. So I'm looking at TikTok and Instagram. That's why I'm looking back and forth. So a blessing of stability. It's number 32. Okay. So what is three? Three is creation. It's expression. It is the product of the decisions that you make. Two is about balance. It's about duality, balance, decisions, partnerships, all of that. So we have a blessing of stability. So hopefully this week is gonna be more stable, even though you know, we have Mars in Cancer, we have Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn, we have all of this stuff, but it doesn't mean that your whole life is going to be disrupted. It means that you're getting this energy push to transform in these areas, okay? The planets, they, uh, you know, they, they give us this energy. They, they um, either give us support or they give us a nudge, but both honestly are support, right? Because it's trying to move you in a certain direction. It's trying to nudge you in a certain direction. So it's like, it doesn't rule your life. It supports your life. It influences your life, okay? So we'll see how that plays out in the tarot reading. All right. It's your birthday week, and you're a three. There you go, Heather. Happy birthday. Okay, so let's pick the deck. Deck number one, the Lightseer's Tarot, or deck number two, the New Baroque Tarot. I need to put this on my website, too, so you guys can go get this, this deck. They gave me a 30% off discount code, you guys. So vote in the comments which one you would like for me to use. Please only vote once, and y'all help me keep track of how many votes each one gets. So deck number one or deck number two. So 
So yeah, I liked the Baroque Tarot so much that I contacted the creators and I was like, I need some sort of link or something because I want to show people this deck because it's beautiful. <laughs> it's hard to tell on Instagram. Y'all are kind of balanced. Ones are really getting it on Instagram. What about TikTok? Who's winning on TikTok? I think twos are getting on TikTok. Whoops, hang on. I need to hit the comment. Whoop, slow down. Looks like twos are getting on TikTok. Okay. I know ones were the majority on Instagram, but TikTok, we have a lot more votes. So it looks like twos got it. Okay. We're going to use the Baroque deck. Like I said, I have a 30% off wheel. Um, I don't know. Did that just pause it? Oh, did my internet just go out again? Please tell me no. It went off on my phone. TikTok, are you still working? <laughs> it's going to piss me off. <laughs> my phone is like, it, it dropped it. Now it picked it back up. Okay. Okay. So anyways, yeah, I, I contacted the creators of this deck because I loved it. Because I don't know, it just feels magical. It's just really pretty. And, um... They created this deck. I, I read their story. They created this deck to help make some money to pay for their med school. And I thought that was really cool. And they took inspiration from, you know, famous painters from the Baroque period or Baroque style. I don't know. Anyways, it's just a beautiful deck. And so I contacted them. I was like, do y'all have like affiliate links? Like what, what do you have? And I normally don't do this, right? People contact me to promote their products and I normally say no because I'm just not a salesperson when it comes to that but um I contacted them and I was like I really love this deck and it's already connecting and they said well we don't have affiliate links but we can give you a 30% off discount code for your people and I was like hell yeah let's do that so I'll send it in the email this morning and I'll also have it on my website today okay all right so let's see what is coming up for us this weekend? What is coming up for us this weekend? Yeah, I have people like contacting me, wanting me to make videos for like their lava lamps. And my payment for that was going to be that they're, they're going to send me a lava lamp. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I, get, I get weird stuff like that all the time. Let's see. What is coming up for us this week? Let's look at today. Today we have the Ten of Wands, okay? Now, the Ten of Wands is we're getting towards the end of some sort of cycle, some sort of journey, some sort of work that you've been doing, okay? It's like carrying all of this on your back. So you might feel like you have a lot going on, a lot that you want to get done this week or today. And it's asking you, do you really need to get every single thing, every single one of these done? Or can you delegate somehow? Okay. What is it that you are carrying forward into this week from last week? What's going on here? What is burdening you today? Because we have the blessing of stability, right? So you're not going to be very stable if you're carrying around all of this baggage. And this is another reason why we have Capricorn, I'm sorry, Pluto going retrograde into Capricorn and then going direct into Capricorn because it's like, you know, we have, Capricorn is the energy of the patriarchy, right? So we have all of this stuff that we've been taught ever since we were kids, like you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, and it's so much, right? It weighs you down, it stresses you out, it's just, it's too much. It's too much for us. It's not normal for what we're supposed to be doing in life, okay? And so you might feel like this heaviness, this burden, and it's asking you what, like how, how can you lighten your load? How can you let go of some things that you are putting on yourself as far as like agreeing to the patriarchy of like, yeah, it has to be this way, I have to do that, I have to do that, okay? So it's just asking you, all right, you're on this journey, you're in it for the long haul, but you're gonna have to lighten your load a little bit, okay? Because if you wanna get to the end, if you wanna get to that prize, then you only need to take what is necessary. You cannot take the drama, the trauma, the low vibrational stuff. You only wanna take what is necessary, okay? Does that make sense? 
Let's look at tomorrow. Ooh, tomorrow we have the Queen of Corn, Queen of Coins. I was gonna say Capricorn and Coins at the same time. So the Queen of Coins is Capricorn energy. Okay. Now, what does she do? She is very organized. She is a go-getter. She is very nurturing, but she's like, you know what? This is what needs to be done. She is one that is like, she's the initiator, right? She is a, um, she's a cardinal sign, okay? The cardinal signs are the ones that get things going. So when we see the queen of coins, she is focused on her physicality. She's focused on her finances, her health, her home, her children, her family. She's very traditional, right? She's like, okay, let me see what needs to get done today, okay? So it's a really great day tomorrow to get things done. Today, you might feel a little stressed out. You might feel like you have a lot going on and it's telling you, okay, let's lighten the load. Okay, you've got the strength to do whatever is necessary, but that doesn't mean you have to carry the load for everybody. It's not your job, okay? So Tuesday, then you're like, okay, let me get this organized. Let me figure out what I need to do. You gotta make sure you're nurturing yourself just as much as you're nurturing everybody else around you, all right? So it'd be a great day maybe to go get a, a pedicure or a manicure or something like a massage, something like that to take care of your physicality. It's a great day to balance your finances. It's a great day to, uh, you know, do something in the home that helps to bring it into energetic balance. There's so much that you could do here. Okay. Let's look at Wednesday. When, <coughs> excuse me. Wednesday, we have the seven of wands. Okay. So Wednesday is another high power day right? It's overcoming obstacles. You might, again, feel like you have a lot coming at you, but when you, when you set strong boundaries, you are overcoming an obstacle of people crossing that boundary, of you just being a yes man, of you just doing whatever everybody wants you to do. You're setting these boundaries for yourself because you're like, you know what? I can't take on all of this. I'm not going to take on all of this. Okay, this is my boundary. So whatever you're dealing with on Wednesday, you've got the higher ground, you've got the upper hand, and you have the ability to overcome whatever obstacle you face on Wednesday. I like that. And the way that you do that is through a balanced state. Okay, think of what it takes to get these rocks to balance right, like that, right? It talks, takes a lot of know-how, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of balance, it takes all the things that you need in order to stay in this balanced state. And we were talking about this, I think, on Friday, where I said, when you are in your balanced state, when you are in your aligned self, you can handle any situation and you don't have to do it through anger, through fear, through drama. You can be like, you know what? This is the way it's going to be. And that's that. Period. You don't have to get angry. Anger is a valid emotion because that's showing you that somebody or something has crossed your boundaries. And the, the way you respond to it is what tells everything, okay? You take your power back, collect your thoughts, and then you state the boundary, okay? That's how you do it through your goddess power. Dealing with a hurricane, oh, that's not good. I think I just lost a side job. Makes sense. Okay. Well, it opens another door. I was just telling myself to relax. I don't have to do everything today. Yeah. See? Y'all are getting it. Okay, let's look at Thursday. Thursday, we have the Five of Cups. Okay. Now, what does the Five of Cups symbolize? It means there's a transition. There's some sort of loss happening but it's for a transition. It is for, it's kind of like to make you turn around and realize that there is still something good in life, okay? So whatever loss you experience, this is a minor arcana, okay? So it's not like a huge thing. It is connected to emotions, but the five of cups is like, okay, I have to let this go. It sucks. It can make you emotional, but the cups are telling you there is still goodness to be had. There's so much more to be experienced in life. Okay, so we have all of this energy here of like empowerment of you really dictating what's going to happen. It's like, you know what? I'm going to lighten my load. I'm going to drop this baggage. I'm almost there. Okay, because the Ten of Wands can be seen as two different things, right? It can be baggage that's weighing you down, but it can also be like, you know what? 
you are almost to the finish line. So if you've been working on a project, this is telling you're almost to the finish line. It might take like extra work today to get it done, right? Because think of the wands as like you're, you're literally building something, okay? But if this, if you're not working on a project, if you're feeling weighed down, this is telling you it's time to lighten your load, okay? You've had enough. You've got to the point where enough is enough, and you're like, I've got to lighten my load, okay? And then we have the Queen of Coins, like I said, very Capricorn energy, like you're going to have all the energy and support and clarity that you need on Tuesday to like get organized, to get things done, but make sure that you are taking care of you, okay? Don't forget about yourself. You're, you're really good at taking care of other people. Don't forget about you, okay? And then Wednesday, we have the Seven of Wands. This is overcoming any obstacles that you encounter through your own power, through your spiritual alignment, because seven is a spiritual number, right? Don't forget that. We talk about numerology all the time. Seven is that spiritual number. It's like, I see the bigger picture. I know that there is something to this. I know the universe always is with me, helping me, guiding me. And so you can overcome these obstacles, right? And then we have the five of cups. The five of cups on Thursday is like, okay, I have to let something go or something's trying to leave. And I need to understand that this is part of life. This is part of my transition into my higher self. If I can teach myself how to see the, the beauty in loss and gain, then I don't take it so heavily. Make sense? Okay. So it could be, you know, something just doesn't go right on Thursday, or you have an issue with a, a relationship, or you're finally deciding to let that old toxic relationship go once and for all. Maybe not like literally, but like emotionally, you're letting it go. There's something here that you're letting go of emotionally or it's leaving emotionally and it's asking you, can you do this? Do you have the ability to see the silver linings in this situation? Okay, because again, it is a transition. It is like you've got to give back to you and you've got to see the goodness of life. Okay, because in the traditional Rider Waite tarot, it's kind of hard to see in this one. Three cups are spilled. There's two standing. Okay, three cups are spilled. There's two standing. So it's like not all is lost. Okay, not all is lost. Don't focus on, you know, the whole like don't cry over spilled milk. It's like don't focus on the things that have, have spilled, have, have lost, right? Focus on what you still have and realize that those empty cups now can be filled with something else. Something else that was meant to stick around. Does that make sense? Y'all catching my drift? <laughs> Do I recommend a deck with the descriptions on the cards? I don't, honestly. I don't recommend those because this is just my own opinion, okay? I don't recommend them because they become a crutch. I see a lot of people claiming to be professional tarot readers on uh, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and they're using the training decks. And I don't recommend that because it's not gonna help you to memorize them because you're gonna use it as a crutch. And then it also separates you from your intuition. Now, when my students are learning tarot, I do recommend that they use their notes, but that they also try to connect with the card and remember the card before they go to their notes. But there's no shame in looking at your notes when you're a beginner. You need to because you need to. I mean, there's a lot that you have to memorize. There's 78 cards, direct and reverse, 156 meanings, plus they all mean different things when they're connected, right? So it's not easy, but when you have the training decks, number one, some of them aren't even the correct meanings. Number two, again, it can become a crutch and you're like, I'm not going to know what these mean without the, the little words right there, okay? So I do really recommend you know, going through an apprenticeship, using your notes, and then training yourself to memorize what the cards mean. That way you can also connect on an intuitive level as well and you get even more messages, okay? Almost done with your first college class. Ooh, that's awesome, Lindsay. I didn't pull a card for Friday. I do that on Friday. So you didn't miss anything. So is that making sense? Do you all understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah, you're welcome, Cheryl. Okay, look underneath the deck, you guys. We got death. Okay, does not mean somebody's going to die. Do not panic. Okay, again, this is a major arcana. So, what is death? Death is ruled by Pluto. We have Pluto and Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn. And right behind it, we have the Eight of Wands. Why, why do we need to experience this death? Why do we need to experience this door closing? Because the universe has plans for you. You're supposed to be moving forward because you're not happy where you are. You're not able to shine. You've got to see here right behind this. I mean, I could, talk, I could go through this whole freaking deck and we could have a conversation, right? We have the nine of coins in reverse. This is like, you know, not, not doing the work that you need to do to get you where you want to be. So it's like you have to decide to do things. Certain doors need to close in order for you to have this transformation. So whatever happens on Thursday, it needs to happen, okay? Because there is a much bigger picture hiding underneath. The universe is trying to help you forward, but it won't until it it shifts your perception, until like it takes your your focus off of this one thing and onto another. Like I had a client just recently, um, you know, they're wanting to build a business, they're wanting to do all these things, but they were too focused on relationships. And I was like, it's going to be too distracting. You don't need to focus on relationships right now. You need to focus on your business. And um, come to find out the relationship thing didn't work out. And they were like, I think that is a sign from the universe that I need to focus on my business because I realize I'm not going to get anything done because I'm too focused on, you know, these people are trying to get into a relationship. And I'm like, ding, there you go. Okay. For me, I swore off relationships for a while because I wanted to build my business. And now that my business is booming, I'm open to relationships. So it's like you have to realize that there are certain things in your life that are distracting you from your true purpose, from your true path, okay? This is why in 2025, it's a nine year, that is an opportunity for you to have the most profound glow up you've ever had. And this isn't a glow up as external, okay? This is a glow up from the inside out, right? This is why I created the Quantum Master Academy. And I'm only taking a select group because this is a real personal glow up that you're going to have to, that you're going to have the opportunity to go through, whether it be with me or on your own. That's your decision. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you always have to reverse cards to get more of the picture? Yes, you should always be reading direct and reverse. Always. Because tarot is a language. And so just like if we took out any negative language, like we, we always say can instead of cannot. Well, that says the wrong message, right? So we have to have direct and reverse because they do symbolize different things. Not every card in reverse is the, the direct opposite, you know, or, or a negative thing. Sometimes a card in reverse is positive, like the Eight of Swords in reverse is way more positive than it is direct. So yes, we need to read uh, direct and reverse to get the full message. Otherwise, you're trying to guess and your logical mind is trying to make things fit and you're going to give somebody the complete wrong message and that could really be damaging to them. So yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what do you suggest to someone that just can't figure out what she's supposed to be doing in life? Uh, Julie, I recommend that you start studying who you are. You need to figure out who you are on an energetic level. You need to know your natal chart, your, your astrological blueprint through your natal chart. You need to know your numerology. You need to know your human design. And you want to know just all of those intricacies about you because that's going to really open the door for you to be who you feel like you're supposed to be, but you're probably holding that part of you back. It gives you permission to step into that space. That's what it did for me. And that's what it does for all my clients. When I do my power coaching with my clients, we go over all of that. We go over the, the natal chart. We go over the human design. We go over numerology because it really gives them the opportunity to be like, that really is me. 
Like, yeah, that totally resonates. And then they step fully into that energy. Okay, so whenever like I found out that I was a self-projected projector, a 6'2 projected projector, I was like, holy shit, that makes so much freaking sense. And I was kind of in a way working against it and it was frustrating me because I was like, why is this not working? It works for everybody else, but it doesn't work for me. Well, because I'm a projector, I'm not supposed to approach situations. I'm not supposed to be the salesman. I'm just supposed to be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And if you want to join, you can join right? That kind of thing. Um, but there are different ways you move about uh, your own path. And it really, really benefits you to know who you are. So yeah, I highly recommend doing that because that will change your life. Yeah, if you've done all that and you know who you are, then you're most likely just holding yourself back. And that's normal. Uh, you just need to give yourself permission to step into that energy. I love that the cards will tell you the truth, yet you still need to get it on your own time. Totally, totally. You want to join me next year? Okay, Tanya, email me because I told everybody if you're wanting to get into the Quantum Master Academy, uh, email me because I, I wasn't able to get everything up on my website this weekend because I didn't have internet service. Uh, <laughs> but email me. And I'll go ahead and put you on my list. I already have a list starting to form. And I'm only taking max like 20 people because I want it to be something, you know, where as many people can join, but small enough to where we can really connect and uh, you really know what you're doing and you get your, your certifications. Yes, I do coaching ses sessions. I do. Uh, so you can go to the link in my bio and scroll down a little bit, and it'll say private sessions with me. It says coaching or tarot, and you can choose that. Yeah. You got the Eight of Cups reversed this morning from the book. Good, 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 good. Okay, so let's keep going. So anyways, with death at the bottom of the deck, this is telling you this is all for a huge transformation, okay? Whatever door closes, just know. You have to just know that another door is opening for you. Okay, you can't be like, well, maybe I hope it is. No, you just know. Okay, cool. That just means something else is happening for me. And I'm excited to see where the universe is going to take me. You have to be that sure in yourself and the universe. And then boom, things just happen. It is magical. Okay, so let's get some Oracle and find out what else we need to know. When I first started tarot. I didn't know about reverse cards. Oh, see, this is why, and, and I'm glad you said that. This is so important. This is why you need to learn from somebody who is a true tarot reader because there's a lot of people on these apps that say, you can do it however you want. You don't have to read reversals. You don't have to shuffle calmly. You don't have to, da, da, da. those are all enabling toxic things, okay? When you learn from a true tarot reader, you're going to learn all the intricacies. You're going to see why it needs to be that way, you know? And this is what I teach all of my students. Like, you have to read reversals because you're missing a whole part of the conversation. You have to use tarot spreads because we want to take your logical mind out of it and let the cards reveal what they need to reveal. You know, it's not about us. It's about the message. So, yeah. People get so mad at me. You know what's funny is I found out just this weekend, uh, I met some, I met a lovely couple and we were switching social medias and um, he handed me his phone to, to look up my TikTok and I started to type in 22 guru and after it said controversy, I was like, what? Controversy? Like what? Or it said 22 guru wrong. And I was like, what the, what's going on that I don't know about? And it was this gal, she was she was mad because this was like a year ago that she made this video. I had no idea. Um, but she she downloaded one of my videos about shuffling and uh, she made a video about me. I didn't even listen to it, but I looked in the comments and then they were all just like shit talking me and you know, making up things about me and stuff like that. And um so that's that's a toxic environment. You have to consider the source. We were talking about that on Friday. Consider the source, okay? Who's talking, right? This person's so toxic 
they're just, you know, I've seen her before on many videos. I've seen her before and never followed her because it's just like so just like heavy, depressive, low vibration, right? So I was like, no, I'm not going to follow her. And then she wound up making like two videos about me, I think it was. And I was just like, okay, like, but I'm still telling you the truth on how to read proper tarot. And the other methods are chaotic. They are disconnected. And it's going to really cause a lot of harm. This is why some people that got into tarot whenever it became like really big on TikTok, they got into tarot and then something happened and they ran to Christianity because something they did scared them. Well, most likely they got their karma for doing tarot improperly and they created this negative energy. It wasn't the tarot. It was them creating the negative energy and something happened and then they it scared them to Christianity. So that's what happens. You know, you got to you got to respect the divination tools, the divination methods. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to get your own karma. Oh girl, Tanya, people do that. Yeah, they they see that I'm a a decent sized creator and uh they try to make videos about me to, yeah, use me for clout. And I'm just like, whatever. I really don't care. Like, grow up. <laughs> People love to create drama on the internet. Look at that. Speaking of envy, it's in reverse. How many times do we pull this card, you guys? I Let me tell you, I'm so sick and tired of seeing this card. But I do love seeing it in reverse. <laughs> because what this is saying is there is so much goodness happening now, okay, for you. You have the ability to tap into this goodness. And it's telling you that a time of increase is happening because you stopped focusing on the negative. You stopped focusing on things that aren't working out. You're seeing it as, okay, this is an opportunity for me. This is meaning that it wasn't meant for, like I have goosebumps talking about this because it makes me so freaking happy when people finally have that light bulb moment of, I'm going to be aligned, I'm going to surrender to the universe, and I'm going to let anything that needs to leave, leave. Because I know that if it's meant to be with me, then it will be with me. Whether it's a, a career, a project, a relationship, friendship, anything like that, you know? I love this because it's telling you a time of gain is here, but sometimes you're gonna have to let go of some things in order to gain, right? There's always gonna be a give and take. So. But the universe is never going to take anything from you that is meant for you. That's the good thing. Okay? There are a lot of forums encouraging open spreads or freestyle reading. Yeah. Oh, I know. You know why they do that? It's going to sound bitchy, but it's true. Because I, I study psychology. I recognize patterns. I see things for what they are. It's just an ability that I have. Maybe it's ADHD. Maybe it's autism. Maybe it's just spiritual connection don't know and I don't care. But I rec I see things for what they are, okay? I've always been that way. And um the people that don't do tarot spreads, the people that don't read reversals, I'm talking about the ones that refuse to do those are because they were never properly taught how to do it, so they don't know how to do it. And so they just do free form and they're like, "Well, my guides told me that your guides didn't tell you shit. Your guides would tell you that, "Hey, this is a divination practice. This is a divination tool. You need to do it properly so we can communicate with you. You know, get your own ego out of the way. But when people don't learn tarot spreads, it's because it's difficult. It's not easy to read tarot spreads. It's, I mean, honestly, it's harder to read just junk laying on the table. But if you properly learn how to read tarot spreads, it makes so much sense. And you can uncover so much information, so much more information that you wouldn't have thought about if you just have a bunch of cards laying on the table. Okay, tarot spreads are here for a reason. And these young tarot readers, and I'm talking about like newbie tarot readers, are wanting to take the lazy approach and call it spirituality and say, my guides told me this, my guides told me that. Your guides would never tell you something that's going to disconnect you from the divine. It's just a lazy approach because they don't want to learn the tarot spreads. They want to throw themselves on social media, call themselves a tarot reader, and start making money. That's the truth. Yes, tarot is divination. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Should you read the cards that fly out? Okay, let me show you this. When you're shuffling tarot, you're shuffling nice and easy. We do not do the, the chaotic, just like aggressive shuffling. That is not how you shuffle tarot, okay? We shuffle nice and easy. And let's say you're shuffling and all of a sudden a card just like randomly flips over or it falls out on the desk. Yes, you absolutely take that card because you didn't force that. That was something that needed to be seen. When you're doing the, the hard, chaotic, aggressive shuffling, you are forcing the cards to act in a certain way. I've literally seen people that didn't have any cards pop out, so they just kind of like throw some on the table. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> you know? No. Tarot should be nice and calm. Tarot is magical, you guys. And energy, any, any divination work that is, you know, going to work, it has to, it requires focused attention, focused intention, okay? When you are shuffling aggressively and you're doing all these things, that is not focused attention or intention. That is just like chaos. And we can't make anything happen. We can't connect when we're in chaos, okay? So this is why we shuffle nice and easily. Did you see that? Yes, we would take that card, okay? Yes, we would take that card. So... I hope that answers your question. Take Erica's class. I'm enjoying it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Good morning, bestie. Uh, hang on. I missed one. I also see patterns, and sometimes I forget people are colorblind to them. I have to remind myself to, yeah, that not everybody sees it. Because I'm always like, like do y'all not, do y'all not see this? Like, how do you, how do you not see this? But yeah, not everybody has that ability. Uh, can you show how to read cards correctly? Oh yeah, I just did that. Plus also you guys on my TikTok, um, there's, I have a series that you can go, uh, purchase. It's like Tarot 101. It gives you the basics. We talk about shuffling and things like that. Or you can check out my Tarot apprenticeship. My live classes are closed right now because we've already started our live classes, but you can get into the self-paced module and go through it at your own pace and you have access to it forever. Uh, the tarot readers using the cards with the meanings on them, such a scam. Well, you know, I don't mind people, you know, practicing, but if they are still needing the training cards, like I said, it's, it's become a crutch, but if they're still needing the training cards, then I don't believe they should be charging because they are still practicing. And it's not a bad thing to practice, but yeah, I shouldn't be charging money or anything. Uh, I'm learning. So my cards have the meaning. That's all right. Anne says, I can feel the patterns. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it takes a while to learn the cards. You have to become like almost borderline obsessed with tarot to memorize it, to really connect with tarot. And that's how I became successful in my business is because I just obsessed over it. I went through an apprenticeship with my mentor. She taught me everything that I needed to know. And then I ran with it. I continued my learning. I practiced every single day. I watched, I learned, like I read, all of that. You want to learn from people that are actual scholars of tarot, that are actual like real tarot readers. And they will lead you to a proper practice to where you can really go through that glow up, which is why we're going to do tarot starting January. We're going to do tarot. Then we're going to get into advanced tarot. Then we're going to get into numerology. Then we're going to get into just basic astrology because astrology can be really complicated and crystals. We're going to go to Reiki one and two, and then I'm going to teach you how to set up your spiritual business. So that's why I'm saying 2025 can be your absolute glow up period. Okay through the Quantum Master Academy. You can get up to eight certifications through through me. I'll be happy to give you certifications, okay? Because I'm certified in all these things. So, yeah. Uh, can you talk about why they aren't connecting with evil spirits? That's holding me back hard. Well, you just decide you're not going to connect with that. We do everything from the highest good for the highest good only. And you set that intention, and so that's why it's important to learn how to read tarot properly because if you are just doing things willy-nilly, you're connecting with any old energy and you never know what's going to happen. 
And so I always bless my decks and my readings to be from the highest good for the highest good only. I ground and protect my energy. It's, it's a whole thing. There are many types of readers though. Okay, but there's, there's a certain way that you do a divination practice. There's a certain way you read astrology. There's a certain way you do numerology. There's a certain way, you know, like a ballerina that is learning how to do ballet. She has to go through and learn the proper way to do it, right? And then she might have her own, like, approach to it, but it's still the right way to do things. You guys, this is science and spirituality coming together. It's not ego. It's not like you have to do it my way. It's you need to understand how energy works, how the brain works, okay? I study metaphysics. I study psychology as well as you know, the occult stuff. So when I talk about these things, it's not just because I want people to do things my way. This is not my way. This is what has been going on for centuries since the tarot became, began, okay? This is why back in the day, you weren't able to be a tarot reader unless somebody gave you a deck because you had to prove that you were responsible enough, that you respected the practice, and that you knew how to do it properly. That's why. So you have to understand that energy affects everything. Intention affects everything. There is a way to do this properly, and that's just the way it is. I want to take your class, but I'm scared. Um, there's nothing to be afraid of, okay? I promise you. Um, let's see. How do you connect over TikTok with somebody's energy? Energy knows no boundaries. Okay? It really doesn't. Like literally, I'm just on the other side of the screen. So I do Reiki from a distance. I do tarot readings from a distance. I do all of that. And because energy knows no boundaries, your intention is on me, mine is on you, and we're connecting. So it's literally, I'm just right here, right in front of you. I'm not thousands or hundreds of miles away. It's, it's fascinating and it's, it's true. You would learn, love to learn all that. Awesome. If you practice pulling a card a day, do you recommend just one card a day or three cards? If you're just starting out learning, just do one card. See if you can memorize it. See what it can represent to you. What books do you suggest to read after learning the cards? Um, anything by Rachel Pollock is really good. Um, by Carl Jung is really good. Um, uh, my cards have two sides, like the reverse side. So how do I shuffle? I don't know. I've never had a deck like that. So I, I can't, I can't tell you. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Should you meditate before you start reading tarot? You should meditate all the time because you want to center and focus your energy. You want to ground your energy, protect your energy, do all that. Yeah. Um, what is a good Oracle deck for beginners? Honestly, any Oracle deck, really. Oracle is more like a, here's the message, it is what it is. Tarot is a language. So any Oracle deck that you feel drawn to. How much is your class? It depends on which one you're referring to. Uh, you can go to the link in my bio and uh, everything's laying out there, laid out there for you. I do not know the price of the class for 2025 yet. I'm getting everything sorted out because some people have already taken my tarot class. And so they're not going to take it again. They're not going to have to pay for it again. Um, so I'm getting all that worked out. Should you also read the Oracle cards in reverse? There are some decks, some Oracle cards that are meant to be read in reverse. And there are some that are only meant to be read direct. You can look in the book and they will tell you. These are great questions. How do you keep from draining your own energy? Is it possible? I definitely want to take your class. Um, it is energy draining. So I take breaks. I ground my energy. I cleanse my energy with my selenite wand. Uh, I go take brain breaks. I go outside. I, I limit the amount of readings that I'm willing to do a day because I do readings and I do coaching and I do uh, my like tribe classes and stuff like that. So yeah, I have to make sure that I maintain the boundary of protecting my energy. Do you ever use a pendulum to answer yes or no questions? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I was taught that in my metaphysics certification class, pen pendulums. Uh, one way to learn about energy is to read about quantum entanglement. Yes, 
Yes, yes. Erica's book is great. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, let's get some more cards. You guys are asking some amazing questions. Love it. So like this, this Oracle deck is meant to be read direct and reverse. So I flip them and I shuffle them. I let them go wherever they want to go. And then we'll draw a card. What about rods? Is that real? Yes, they are. I literally have them right here on the floor. <laughs> I think they are. Um, I got some for my son. Do you have links for the charts you talked about earlier, like nano and human design? I do not. Um, you can look up. It's ihdschool.com. That's a human design one. And then you can literally Google free natal chart. And um, I think it's like astro charts or astro.com, something like that. Yeah, they're pretty easy to find. You love listening and learning? I'm so glad. I love teaching. I love sharing this information. Like this is my, this is my jam right here. Teaching, sharing information, all of that. So yeah, you're very welcome. This deck is the Enchanted Map Oracle Cards. You can find it on Amazon. And it might even be in my TikTok showcase. I can't remember. Okay, let's see what else we need to know about this week. Unexpected visitors in reverse. Ooh, this is interesting, you guys. We have not pulled this card before. Let's find out what it says. I love to read my Oracle card meanings out of the book because I think they have fantastic messages. Um, you do not need to memorize your Oracle. You do need to memorize your tarot. Okay, so unexpected visitors in reverse. Uh, unpleasant news is only unpleasant when you resist accepting what it is or what is. Sometimes the thing most desired is kept away from you because it's not for the highest good of you or others. Sometimes there is loss or disappointment due to a destiny whose pattern can't be understood yet. Change is something that may be forced upon you, like bad weather that threatens a boat. Adapt to the shift in conditions and think how beautiful the sky will be afterward. Accept what is and a more fulfilling path will soon be revealed. Remember that if you expect the unexpected, nothing can come as a shock. See, the oracle cards connect to the tarot. They know, right? You know these things or the, the, the oracle know these things because that's literally what we were just talking about, right? Right? Because we were talking about on Thursday, I said, there's change happening here. And we had death underneath the deck with the eight of wands saying, hey, this is what's hiding underneath because, you know, you're not as happy as you want to be. And it's going to require some, some work and some effort and some surrender. So the cards know, you guys. This is, I mean, I do this all day, every day, and the cards still amaze me. It's magical how this works. <laughs> Oh. Someone sent you a pendulum and you don't know how to use it. We're going to go over that in the uh, the Quantum uh, Master Academy. <laughs> nice. I started saying, what amazing thing will happen today? Very nice. I was late to the reading and what you just said is what I needed. Well, good. I'm glad you heard it. Good, good, good. Let's see what else. Let's do this one. But do y'all but do y'all understand everything now as far as like how energy works, how intention works, and things like that, and why it's really important to properly understand how to do a divination practice, okay? It doesn't matter, just like the uh, the pendulum, there is a right way to do that. Just like the dowsing rods, there is a proper way to do that because, let, let me show you. If you have these rods, okay, if you have these rods and you don't know how to hold your arms, they're going to give you the most wonky answers possible, okay? If you have these rods and you're moving around and you're doing all the things, you're going to get false answers. You have to know how to properly use these tools to get the right answers, okay? Let me show you this. I think I still have it in here, hang on. Where is it? Maybe some other. 
scheduler. Hang on. No, it's not. Damn it. Okay, I'll show you with um I'll show you with this. We're gonna use this as a pendulum. You can use anything as a pendulum. Okay. If you don't know how to use a pendulum, let me wrap it some more so you can see it better. If you don't know how to properly use a pendulum and connect with it, you're going to get the wrong answers, okay? Your connection with your pendulum is it's reading the energy from your body. Your body's reading the energy from the universe, okay? And so you wanna connect with it properly before you start asking it questions. And so if you don't know how to do that, you're going to get the wrong answers. Make sense? Same thing with tarot. If you don't know how to do it properly, you're going to get the wrong answers. So learning how to do a divination pro practice properly is not like an ego trip. It is to make sure you don't get the wrong answers, okay? Make sense? Do I have any tips on using crystals? I feel like the only one that works is my selenite wand. Well, selenite is like a a good overall uh, crystal. It's great. We're going to learn about crystals in the Quantum Master Academy. Um, you can get the Crystal Bible. I mean, you can get book, books on crystals. I'm sure you can search it up on YouTube and stuff. But um, I'm bringing somebody in uh, for the crystal class that's going to teach us all about, you know, the basics of crystals, what they are, what the different types are, how to use them, and and all of that. Let's see, let's see. What else do we need to know? We have moon wishes. The moon shows me patience. Look at that. And we're about to go into eclipse season. You know, we're going to experience eclipses soon. And we have all of these phases, the, the planetary alignments. And it's like, I want things to happen now. But the moon is like, hey, relax. Calm your energy Focus your energy, set your intentions, and then you're going to start to see miracles. Because what does a full moon represent? It represents things coming to light, things being revealed, things coming to fruition, okay? So you have to wait for it to build. You have to wait for all the pieces to fall into place. And when you wait, when you're patient, it shows you so, like, the most miraculous things happen, Please believe me on this because I've experienced it, okay? Did you decide on that as the final name of the academy? Yes, Quantum Master Academy. In the quantum class, do we have to know tarot or prerequisites? No, we are gonna start with the foundation tarot apprenticeship. Then we're gonna move into advanced tarot, okay? So if you have not taken any of my tarot classes, uh, the live or the self-paced module, you will need, you will have to go through the first class, which is tarot apprenticeship. And that's a 12 week class, just like normal. And then we'll get into advanced tarot and then we'll get into metaphysics and then uh, astrology, crystals, um, numerology, astrology, crystals, um, Reiki, all that stuff. Okay. These are all the things that I study. These are all the things that I have certifications in. I've gone through mentorship in. I do all day, every day. So these are things that I'm well versed in. Thank you for the hearts. Let me get a drink. Correct. You do not charge your water or crystals in an eclipse because eclipse is erratic energy. Yes. Okay. Okay. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's pull this one. What else do we need to know? But yeah, if you're wanting to be in the Quantum Master Academy, the QMA class, um, email me right like before. I, I don't even have it up on my website right now because I didn't have any internet over the weekend. So you can email me if you want to be like the first people that I contact about it. Uh, like the first people to be, um, considered for the group. Um, and I'll add, absolutely add you to the list. And then I will send you all the information as soon as I have it up, which I will be working on today and tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, look at that. We have occupation. Okay. 
It's like, what do you, what do you really want to be doing? You know, what is it that you constantly focus on? What is it that you're constantly working towards? I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, I was going, I was taking my son somewhere and I was coming back home and I was thinking about, you know, the people that say, oh, I love my job. You know, I love my job. And I always wonder, you know, do you really love your job or is it you, you like it because it's the lesser of the evils, you know? Like, do you really love your job? Like, would you really get up and do this if you didn't get paid? Or is it just the lesser of the evils? You have to kind of like ask yourself that kind of stuff. You know, am I settling because it's just what's available? You know, it pays the bills. It's fine. I love that it pays the bills. Maybe that's what they love. And some people do actually love their job, which is fantastic. And that's one of the first things that I ask people when I meet them. Uh, like if they start talking about career, I'll ask them what they do for for their career. And they'll tell me and I'm like, do you love it? <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, you know, like what? What is it that you love? What is it that you don't love? What would you rather be doing? And, you know, then, of course, they just like everything starts turning on. And uh, it's fun. It's fun to do that. Um, but if they don't want to talk about it, it's fine. But like if they start asking me about career I was like, yeah, you should be doing what you love. Like, what do you love to do? And hopefully they leave inspired. <laughs> I had one lady I sat next to at a coffee shop. Um, my sister and I used to do um, Monday coffee meetup or whatever it was called. And um, it was a friend of hers. And she sat next to me. She was like, yeah, I'm just so frustrated because I've, you know, I've been wanting to do this. I want to do that. And when I sit next to somebody, I'm a projector. So I penetrate into their aura, right? I start picking up their energy and I started asking, you know, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about, what if you did this? What if you did that? And she was like, oh my God, like I never thought of it that way. And she was like, I'm going to go home and I'm going to get started on this right now. And she was so excited. And that's why I love what I do. You know, it, I, this happens all the time because people come and tell me their stuff. And I'm just like, well, ha have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And then boom, they take off with it and they become a success with it. And that's what makes me happy. You know, my literal job on this planet is to make your life better. So you have to ask yourself, what is it that I really love? What feeds my soul? And how can I do that on a daily basis? And then, then you, you know, focus on compensation and things like that. But, oh, look, we got grace again. We got that on Friday, didn't we? Yeah, because we had all the purple cards on Friday. So we have grace. It says... You who glides across the waters of my soul, bring me your wisdom and light. Help me transform into elegance and grace. Inspire me with dignity and the spirit of beauty. So when we were talking about this on Friday, I was talking about being able to move through life and situations with grace. How do you do that? Well, you, you see it as just what we were talking about before. You see it as things need to happen. Otherwise, they wouldn't happen, okay? Things need to shift. Things need to change because it's all pushing me on this, on this journey that is mine, on this path that is actually mine instead of me trying to fit onto somebody else's path, okay, into somebody else's mold. So when you, you know, when you see a duck or a goose or a swan, you see them just gliding across the water, right? But you know this is going on underneath, <laughs> right? And so there are things hiding underneath the surface that are propelling you forward that you can't see. Okay, does that make sense? I love my job. My boss is retiring in a few years. I'm not sure if I want to pursue, pursue the same field. Oh, interesting. Okay. That just like, yeah, open yourself up to all possibilities. That could be exciting. But do y'all understand what I'm saying about the whole duck situation? It's like... um, there's so much going on underneath the surface, which is why I like to look at the bottom of the deck because I see death happening right here, right? I see the eight of wands. This death is happening to push you, to move you forward because it's like this door maybe had like, imagine you're on a path and you're, you're walking down, this door is open and it has all these beautiful, attractive things in it. And you're just like, wow, that's so pretty. And you're standing there just like gazing at it da, 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 and you're wasting so much time spending hours in this door, you know, just like looking at it and, 
and, and realizing that you can't have it, but you still love to be in that energy. You still love to look at it and, and you try to get it to be part of your, your journey, but it just doesn't work. Right. And all of a sudden the universe comes by and like slams that door shut. And you're like, what the, like, no, I liked, I liked, you know, that energy. I like staring at all that stuff. I want that to be part of my life. And the universe is like, nope. And then what do you do? You turn your focus and you continue down your path. Does that make sense? So that's what the universe does when it closes the door because you're being distracted. You're being um, hoodwinked by things that are not meant for you. And so when it closes that door, it's like, okay, you shift your focus and now you're like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be going this way. Totally forgot, <laughs> you know? Yes, redirection. Swan feet. <laughs> I was like, dig, 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 underneath. But I mean, that's how it works. Very few people do I feel energetically drawn to. <clears throat> I wonder if I can trust that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it grows with practice. It grows with trust. It grows with like listening to your intuition on what you're what you're feeling around a person or what you're feeling about a person. Like there are people on social media that like have a huge social media platform like on TikTok and stuff like that, but I've never followed them. And then it winds up later that they're extremely controversial and something negative that they've done or that they do, whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, so there's the reason why I didn't follow them. You know, if you have to follow your intuition. You have to just go with what you feel and trust in it because your intuition is always going to push you towards your highest good. It's not going to be anything toxic. It's not going to be anything egoic. Your ego leads you to things to like try to control things, to get you stuck. And it's a distraction. Your intuition will always push you in a way that might be a little bit scary, but it's all for your highest good. Yes, yeah, so much going on behind the scenes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay, let's get... A message from our money deck. What is our money message for the week? Y'all are asking some great questions. I absolutely love this. And this is what I look forward to next year in the QMA. I'm so excited because we're going to be so close. We're, you know, I'm going to take you on this journey and we're going to bond and you're going to have some fantastic questions. You're going to have some wonderful aha moments. It's just, yeah. This is a whole different kind of glow up that you're going to experience. It's not about, you know, the superficial stuff. It's going to be like you are going to transform literally from the inside out. Like you're going to see life in a whole different perspective that it will never be the same. And I know this because it happened to me. So when you take it seriously, it changes. Golly, how many times we're going to get this one too? Promoter. It says... If there's a new idea or project manifesting, know it has great potential for success. Number two, careers in the nightlife industry, events, or restaurant industry could be right for you. So if you've been thinking of like opening your own place or like opening your own restaurant or running a night, like nightclub or something, okay. Hang on, I gotta verify myself. I don't always recommend the nightlife stuff because that's where a lot of toxicity happens and a lot of uh, substance abuse happens and escapism happens. But if you can do it in a way that is healthy and entertaining and makes people laugh or makes people happy, cool. Uh, number three, use the law of attraction for money. Be the energy you want to attract. Live the lifestyle. We've talked about this. Was it Friday or Monday? Live the lifestyle. If something that you are putting your attention on does not match the lifestyle that you have dreamed up here, why are you focusing on that? Why is it even around you? Why is it even a thing? Okay? If it doesn't line up with the lifestyle, this needs to be a healthy thing. Okay? If it doesn't align with the lifestyle, then why, why put energy and effort into that? Okay? Night shift nursing. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's healthy. I started this journey through a friend. It's been a year and I'm on my own journey. And now I'm on my own journey. Good, good, good. Uh, if you want a reading, you can book through the link in my bio. Okay, this is a collective reading. Uh, let's do one more and then we'll get into the um, Rebel deck. 
Let's do this one. It suctions onto these cards and it makes them fly out. I've never searched for tarot. One day your account popped up. I've searched energetic things and you're still the only tarot account that will pop up. Oh, wow. <laughs> thanking the energies for divine placement or thanking the energies for divine placement. That is funny. I like that. Oh, thank you, Tanya. You know what's funny, you guys, is I'm kind of like, okay, these keep flipping over. I wanted the blonde. I've told you all this before. I've wanted the blonde for the silver, not gray, blending. <laughs> I refuse to say gray. It was supposed to be like, like blended in. And it went in, like she went in like hot and heavy. And I was like, okay. But you know, I just don't know if the blonde is me. I might, I've been really contemplating going back darker, but richer. Can't shuffle and talk at the same time. Darker and richer. I don't know. I just don't know if the blonde is me. We'll see. What do y'all think? I want it more like a... Like an... Not like the... Not the cowboy copper. Not copper auburn. But like a really pretty auburn with my natural brown hair and things like that. You love the lighter? See, I know everybody says they love the blonde, and I'm just like, I don't know if I like it. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Dark underneath makes it edgy. Okay. Uh, okay, I don't know. I'm still contemplating. We'll see. Because I have such like blue gray eyes, I feel like they get kind of washed out. You know, my skin, I feel like gets washed out. Um, I wanted something that like, I don't know, pops more. We'll see. Ooh, we have House of Flowers. Look at that. And I'll read this to you. Ask the pendulum. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, 36, House of Flowers. We're going to read this one. I haven't pulled this one in a long time. It says, House of Flowers, power of nature, joy of life, diversity, beauty. Out of this small white house on the top of a hill bursts flowers full of life and rich in colors. It's like an explosion. The two ladies walking by looking tiny in comparison to the giant falling leaves. They enjoy the, I'm sorry, they enjoy the enormity of nature, the power of its diversity, but even a single bloom in a vase can transform a space, each petal a world unto itself and a wonder of creation. This card signals love for life in this moment, full of energy, beauty, and joy. I love that. So it's like seeing the beauty in everything, realizing that there is wonder in everything. And, you know, if you're not too happy with your space, Zhuzh it up with some flowers. Like I have to do, I got some new flowers off a TikTok shop. And let me tell you, you guys, these flowers have been ravaged by the, the kitten, Luna, the spawn of Satan. Uh, and they have survived. <laughs> Thank God. And uh, so I can't have real ones because she'll tear them to shreds. But um, yeah, I got these new flowers and I love them. And they're like holding up to, to that little demon. So... You know, do what makes you happy. Put some pretty things around your space. I've been thinking of lightning mine to help blend the silver. <laughs> That's funny. I just, yeah, I wanted it different. Like I wanted it like white, you know, I wanted it to be like how my silver is, which is like bright white and it didn't, yeah, it's, it's still just blonde. It's yellow blonde. It looks better on camera, like lighter because I have the light right here, but it's just not fully white like I wanted. Um, that deck, where did I put it? That deck is the Oracle of Mystical Moments, Tracy. You can find it on Amazon. Oracle of Mystical Moments. Now, I don't want ash blonde. That's what I am right now, I feel like. Uh, no, I wanted like white, like silver white. Let's see. Hang on. Let me catch up right quick, you guys.
Darker in the fall. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking, Stacy. Now, believe me, Pablo, I don't do things because others like it. I, 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 I realize that I can't see myself the way other people see, so I like to get people's input. But yeah, at the end of the day, believe me, I'm always going to do whatever I want. <laughs> but I like to get input because... I like to, because I realize that, like I said, I can't see myself the way other people see me. And um, so it's nice to get like an analysis of my own feelings plus the way other people perceive me. And I'm like, okay, but yeah, I totally, at the end of the day, if I'm still feeling really strongly about it, I will change it. I was told by a shaman that my house wants me to plant flowers everywhere. Ooh, yeah. It wants to be pretty too. Blonde, exudes wisdom and mastery to what you do. Okay. You have actually inspired me to color my hair gray with darker undertone to blend with... Oh, I love that, Gina. Well, good. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk to the girl. Um, yeah, look, I've said platinum, Cheryl, but it, it always winds up the same color. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, what am I saying wrong? Um, like they do a beautiful job. Like it is a beautiful color, but it's not like what I had envisioned. Like I want that like white and I realize that there's different levels, but for me, it's like, I, I, this is how, this is why you should understand your, your natal chart. I have Venus and Virgo. Okay. I'm very particular about the way things look. Okay. I'm also a Leo. So my hair, I'm very particular about my mane. And so if like, if it's not looking the way that I had envisioned, then I will sit there and look in the mirror and just not be happy every time, right? It's a thing. I recognize it. I have self-awareness <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. I'm just like, okay, well maybe this isn't the right color for me because it's not turning out the way that I want it to. And it might require too much maintenance or like damaging of my hair. So... Yeah. Yeah, some ash can wash you out. Yeah, see, that's why I have to be careful because I'm so white and I have red undertones. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know. Uh, and plastic or silicone, the, the flowers, I really don't know what they're made of. I think they're on my showcase uh, on TikTok. I'm not sure. Cats are precious. Oh, you, you need to meet this one. She looks precious. She's evil. Same, Venus and Virgo and a Leo. Very particular about my hair too. Oh, I love it, Lisa. You're also a Leo. Good, see? Leo's unite. Yeah, she put a toner on it that gave it like this, like kind of silvery ash color. But uh, yeah, again, I'm just like, I, I want the, like I wanted it to be like white. I wanted it to be like where it blended in. And I, I wasn't expecting this much blonde. And this was from the initial gal. Like I, it was just supposed to be up here. I don't know, whatever. Enough about my hair, but yeah. <laughs> Let's get, this is the Rebel deck. This, this deck has an attitude, so if you get offended easily, scroll away. Um, I think it's hilarious, and I love it because it's like in your face. As an Aries rising, I appreciate this deck. All right, what is our message for this week? What is our message for this week? Oh, you got a feeling you just can't shake. That little voice inside you, listen to that shit what it says. It says you have a feeling you just can't shake. That is telling you something. That is your intuition. Okay. That is like, Hey, you need to pay attention to this. You need to go this way. You need to move away from this. You need to do this and this and that, right? That is your internal guidance system. And it's telling you pay attention to it because it's leading you somewhere. Okay, it's leading you to an opportunity. It's getting you out of a toxic situation. Everybody's going to be different, but it's telling you, you have a feeling you just can't shake. What is it? Okay, for me, when, uh, I mean, gosh, ever since I can remember, I knew that I was meant to do like big things. 
I always just used to just think it was like the Leo in me because everybody's like, oh, Leo has to have all the attention on them, blah, blah, blah. And I really don't. I'm like, I don't want attention unless like I'm speaking on something or I'm performing, right? Otherwise, leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I always knew I was meant to do big things. and I, can't, I could never shake that energy. Like I, I just knew it. And so I tried all these different things and they wouldn't work out. And I'm just like, no, there has to be something because I feel it. I can see it. I can sense it. I know I'm meant to do big things. And then finally, it was when I let the toxic people leave my life that everything started happening. And I put my blinders on. I focused. I allowed myself to be my true self. And that's when, boom, everything took off. That's when I had that glow up through a massive level, okay? So it's not just a physical glow up that you can go through. It is an actual life-changing glow up from the inside out. And it's, it's so transformative. The reason why I will always say or recommend learning divination practices, understanding uh, astrology and numerology and things like that, you don't have to get super deep into you know things if you're not that interested, but you do need to understand them. Because the more you understand this energy, the more you like get it, the more you're going to experience in life, okay? There's a reason why, you know, the, uh, the, the rich people, they use astrology, they use numerology, they use tarot, they use all these things, they just don't tell you. There's a reason why there's a farmer's almanac. The farmers use astrology for their crops, Hello. <laughs> they use all of that, okay? And so they use astrology, herbology, all those things, right? So it's like, why not? Why aren't you using these things to help plant your seeds? So you can reap the harvest. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> Catch my drift? I have many, my soulmate being near, being my true self, and something big is about to happen. There you go, yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. But do y'all do y'all understand what that what I mean? It's like you you have this this feeling, you have this knowing, and it's not just a delusion, it's not just an idea. It is like this deep seated knowing that you are meant for something, or you're meant to go this way, or whatever it is. Like your your body is always telling you something. Okay, like whenever uh, I meet people, I can I can typically tell certain things from them, right? Like I, uh, gosh, this was back when I was married, so this would would have had to been early two thousands. Um, my then husband introduced me to his buddy, and um, and I told him I said he's gonna wind up screwing you over. There's something. I don't like his energy. There's something about it. And this is before like I allowed myself in my woo-woo era, right? And um, he was like, oh no, he, he's my, I've known him forever. He's a great guy. Da, da, da. What happened? I screwed him over. And there was another, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I could just tell this off of people, right? Because I have a penetrating aura. I can read their energy. And I'm just like, I don't like that. So that was my gut feeling, right? You get those feelings too. You just have to pay attention to them. You have to connect with them. And then you respond in, in whatever it's telling you. Either you get away from the person or if you really like their energy, you can you know connect with them. Or if you need to go a certain way or like make a different turn than you're used to when you're driving to work, whatever this is, you're always being guided. It's just telling you, listen to it, okay? Because that's going to help you. Yes, it does feel a lot better, right? When you have people to talk to you about these things. Yeah. So, all right, you guys. If you missed the beginning of the reading, don't worry. I put it all up on YouTube so you can rewatch it. Um, this one, I don't know if I'll be able to post on TikTok because of the length. I try to speed it up a little bit so it gets down to like the 60-minute length. But I will put this up on, on YouTube. Um, if you're wanting to be considered for the Quantum Master Academy, you can email me because again, I don't have it up on my website for you to apply yet. Um, but email me and I will put you on my list and you will be the first to know 
when all the information is up and you will be the first to be considered, okay? Um, it'll be all of 2025. Unless you have taken my tarot apprenticeship, the live class or the self-paced module, you won't begin until we do advanced tarot, okay? So you'll have that break. And we'll take classes or we'll do our classes once a week. Then we'll take breaks in between and we'll just keep it going. This is one year of your life that you can commit to and it's going to transform you in ways that you can't even fathom. Okay? I know this because I did it. I spent several years learning this stuff and I'm going to teach it all to you in one year and then it's your responsibility to take off with it. Okay? To make it more. All right? So I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will see you back here Friday morning, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. I will be on time because I should have internet <laughs> since it's working now. Um, but yeah, if you need anything else, I'm always here. The link is in my bio. And I hope you have a wonderful week, okay? Glad I called out of work today. Great messages. You're welcome. Can you only do this in a live class? Yeah, this this is only going to be able to be in a live class. I'm sorry, Tracy. I know that it would be like the middle of the night for you. I'm going to see what times work for everybody. It would be nice to be able to do it during the day because I'm not a fan of evening classes. But I'm going to go, I'm going to be asking everybody what their time preference is. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe I can split it up or maybe everybody is good with during the day. We'll have to wait and see. So I will let everybody know, okay? All right, see y'all.